Hello students, today we are going to start a new chapter force and pressure. In this chapter we are going to cover up few topics which are force a pull or push, exploring forces, a force can change the state of motion, force can change the shape of an object, contact force, non-contact force, pressure, pressure exerted by liquid and gases and atmospheric pressure. Now force. What is a force? When a push or pull is applied to an object, it is called force. Now, if you take an example of opening a door, one has to pull it. And to close the door, one has to push it. Thus, we can say in both the condition, a person applies force forces by pull or push. Similarly, to kick a ball, one has to push, that is, a force is applied. To ride a bicycle, one has to push the pedal. In this condition, force is applied while pushing the pedal. So, we can say that in every activity, force is required. Now, it is clear that each action can be grouped as a push or pull. So, to apply a force on an object, interaction between object and source of force is necessary. Now, if there is no interaction between two object, effect of force cannot be seen. Now, a force can change the state of an object from rest to motion or vice versa. So, to let a force come into play, two or more objects must interact with each other or else what will happen the force or, the, or we can say that the effect of force cannot be seen. Now what is the SI unit of force? The SI unit of force is Newton. Now here we are going to discuss about the characteristics of forces. When two forces act in the same direction the net resultant force on an object is the sum of these two forces. That means two forces are acted upon the object. What happens? The resultant force on an object is the sum of those two forces. That means that those are uh, forces applied by the two persons. Now the second thing is that when two forces act in opposite directions, the net resultant force is the difference of these two forces. So we can say that the resultant will be the difference of those two forces. The force has a magnitude which describes its strength. Now the force always has a direction in which it is applied. Now you can see on the above picture the direction of the force. So the force always has a direction in which it is applied and a measure of its strength or the magnitude. Now the next is the effect of a force may alter when the direction of the magnitude of the force is changed. So the effects of the force will be different when the direction of the magnitude of the force is changed from one to the other. So, if two forces are acting upon each other having equal magnitude and in opposite direction, then the net force acting on the object will be the zero. That means you can see on the screen the two people, they are pushing the object in a two different direction. That means one is one is pushing from this side and another one is pushing from this side. So what it happens, both are applying the force, both are applying equal forces on the object and what happens, the object, it remains over there where it is. So we can say that the net force acting on the object will be zero. The next is the force can bring different objects to an object's position, size and shape. That means by applying the force upon an object, it can change the position, size and the shape of the object. Next, the force can change the shape of an object which we were discussing right now. Here you can see on the screen how a rubber band shape is changed when it is stretched. So once it when it is stretched, it is it becomes a little bit bigger and one the stretching is released so it come back to its original position same way in case of sponge as well as the spring when we squeeze our spring it becomes smaller when we release it it becomes bigger so we can say that the shape of an object 
can be altered if some force is applied onto it. Depending upon the magnitude of the force that is being applied and the rigidity of the object, the effect on its shape and size can be observed. So thus we can say that the force can change the shape of an object. Now we can take another we can take one more example that when we apply force on an inflated balloon we use our hand on both the sides so the force of pressure changes the shape of the balloon same way at your home when your mother changes the shape of the dough into a bread by applying force with a rolling pin a blacksmith changes the shape of an iron rod by applying the force using a hammer so we can say that there are various examples by which we can say that the force can change the shape of an object. So it is clear that the force is a push or pull that can bring following changes. That means it can make an object move, it can change the speed of a moving object, it can change the direction of motion of an object, it can bring about a change in the shape of an object, it can cause some or all of these effects. We can say that the action cannot take place without applying the force. For example, an object cannot move by itself. Its speeds cannot be changed by itself. Its direction cannot be changed by itself or its shape cannot be changed by itself. So what we need over here, we need a force to change its shape, direction, speed, everything. Now type of forces. On the basis of the nature of the interaction between two or more objects, forces can be classified as contact force and non-contact force. Contact forces are applied only when two or more object objects come in contact with each other. So under this contact force, we can have the muscular force and the frictional force. Next in non-contact force, the kind of forces are applied when the object do not come in contact with each other and yet are exerting a force upon each other. So under this we see we can say that the magnetic force, the gravitational force and the electro electrostatic force comes. Now contact force. Forces that comes into contact after the interaction between the object is called contact force. Now contact force acts on the point of contact. For contact force, the interaction between the object is very much necessary. We know about many examples that uh, pushing a car, opening a drawer or kicking a ball or hitting a ball. So in every case, the interaction of between the object is very much necessary. Right. Now, first of all, here we are going to discuss about the muscular force. The force that comes into play because of the actions of muscles is called the muscular force. We can say that human beings use muscular force in order to walk. We can take many more examples like that the expansion and contraction of lungs is because of muscular force or the movement of food along the food fight that is also of because of the muscular force. The animals also exist the muscular forces that is why they can move from one place to another. The muscles work together to perform an actions that means the force that comes into play because of the actions of the muscles is called the muscular forces. Now next is the frictional force. It is the force that is exerted by the surface over an object whenever the object moves on the surface. So what happens? The force of friction always act in the opposite direction of the motion of the object. You can see in the picture, the girl can ride because of the frictional force. In frictional force, it leads to the generation of heat as two surfaces come in contact with each other. You can do this example by yourself. When you rub our, your hands together, you will see that the heat is produced as a result of friction between the hands. Frictional force also leads to wear and tear of the surfaces of the objects that come in contact with each other. The sole of shoes often get worn out due to the frictional force that acts between them and the ground as we walk. Our well, next topic is non-contact force. Under non-contact force, we are going to first discuss about the magnetic force. So the force exerted by any magnetic object is called magnetic force. So the magnetic force attraction 
or repulsion that arises between the electrically charged particles because of their motion. It is the basic force responsible for such effects as the action of the electric motors and the attraction of the magnets for the iron. It happens because of that only. You can see that here there are two types of magnets are shown. One is the bar magnet and another one is the horseshoe magnet. And here you can see how the metallic objects they get attached to the two ends of the magnet. That means the north pole and the south pole. In this case you can see that the magnetic field you can see the magnetic field lines over here. So when any metallic objects come into this magnetic field it gets attracted to the magnet. But when we bring uh, other magnet suppose if you bring the north pole of the other magnet to this magnet what happened there we see the repulsion of the repulsion between the two magnets. But if we change the pole of the magnet suppose if we face the south pole of the magnet towards the north pole of this magnet what happens there we see the attraction between the magnets. So the attraction or repulsions arises when a magnet comes into the magnetic field. Next is the electrostatic force. The electrostatic force is also known as the Coulomb force or Coulomb interaction. It is the attractive or repulsive force between the two electrically charged object. You can see here in the example this object and the water which is falling these are the two charged objects where we can see the, the because here you can see the attraction between the water and the balloon. Okay, so the like charges repel each other while unlike charges attract each other. So in this case here we can see the unlike charges because of the unlike charges they are attracting each other. So the Coulomb's law is used to calculate the strength of the force between the two charges. However, you have noticed that when you rub a plastic comb or pen on your hair or bring it near the small bits of paper, the paper bits attracts towards the comb or the pen. So the pen or the comb is said to have an acquired the electrostatic charges. Okay, and such comb or the pen is an example of a charged body. Force exerted by a charged body on another charged body or one charged body and another uncharged body by virtue of which they attract or repel each other is called electrostatic force. A positively charged body attracts a negatively charged body and repels a positively charged body without coming in contact. So we can say that the electrostatic force is a non-contact force. Now the next one we can see on the screen about the gravitational force. You all know about Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton discovered gravity when he saw a falling apple while thinking about the forces of nature. Whatever really happened, Newton realized that some force must be on falling objects like apple because otherwise they would not start moving from the rest. Okay, so here we can say we can say that. The, there must be some gravitational force or you might have observed that when you throw an object upside it always falls on the earth or the water always falls towards the ground when the tap is opened or the fruits always fall on the ground. So these are all due to the gravitational force or force of gravity. The force exerted by earth, moon, sun and other planet is also called the gravitational force because why it is say so because earth attracts all the ob objects towards it not only the earth but all the other objects in the un universe including the planets and moon attract all the objects towards them so we can say that the gravitational force acts on all the object of the universe when anything is falling from a height it falls over the ground why it falls to over the ground because the because of the gravitational pull of earth now in the same case water in river always flows downwards to the force 
due to gravitational pull the object comes down so children today we are going to study this much only about the different types of forces the contact forces and non contact forces next day we are going to study about the next topic that is the pressure